coming out your house, you ain't know what was gonna happen. Like, you know what? Like, just the mentality of that time, thinking of where my mentality was at, it was all about the money holes in the clothes, you know what I mean? Where I'ma get money, what bitches I'ma fuck, and like that was the whole mentality. You really never knew what your day was gonna end up like by the end of the night. Every day was an adventure for us, cause sometimes, you know, like one thing I credit in the in the ghetto and growing up in the projects and all that. Like you know, I see some of my my son. He's growing up in the suburbs and and he don't have one friend. You know, the next door neighbor and shit like that. Like the friendship is limited. You know. Growing up in the projects, I had a thousand friends growing up. I'm talking about a thousand different personalities where I was able to absorb every day and learn from. And all these different identities of different people from all walks of life, man, that were my friends. So it molded me into the person I became, man, having that much friendship and camaraderie around me, man. That shit was crazy. Now, 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 now tell me this now. So, drugs always been a part of, you know, the America in general, but definitely, you know, poor neighborhoods and mm -hmm. New York City. <clears throat> but going into the late 80s as the, you know, the, the crack era, quote unquote, um, it seems like you guys, I mean, even during, so, so, the, so the low lights, the Decepticons and all that, how is it that, or not how is it, but, but you guys were doing this theft robbery thing while, you know, every not everyone else, but, you know, why why didn't you guys get into the drugs or, well, or see did that, you or what? Nah, just being honest, um, low lives did everything. That's another people, that's another thing people don't really know about low life. They all think we just wore polo and store polo. We actually did everything, man. We stole every name brand. There were plenty low lifes who crack dealers, dope dealers, stick up kids, weed sellers. We did everything. You know what, what I mean? About, what about members of the low lifes falling victim to being drug abusers? That happened as well. Like, you know, we suffered every consequence you get from the ghetto, man. Every consequence, from everything we suffered. Right now, my man Fast Capone died when he was 17. He's somebody we talk about in our music. We have mules of him, we have everything. Fast Capone became a successful drug dealer at 16. You know, where he was already driving cars and you know, in the ghetto, this ain't like the suburbs where you get your license at 16 and shit like. He lived a life where, you know, we all admired. And he but was- it only lasted a year. And he was one of our little guys, man. You feel what I'm saying? But his success rose so fast that he was from Fuck. Brownsville? He was from Brownsville, he was from Marcus Garvey Village, but according to the way he did it and how he did it and where he's from, it was still a success story in everybody's eyes, man. No matter how ignorant it may seem or or regardless of how, pe it's still the American dream. He was rising above what the fuck we were all succumb to live with, man. But he got killed in his drug shit. He got shot. 15 times. They shot him five times in the face. Where was this at? In in, in Brooklyn. Like where, you know where at? Nah, not a, I was in prison when it happened, so, you know what I mean? But it was it was crazy. What were you in prison that time for? That time was for digging pockets. That's what, another, digging that's, pockets mean? digging pockets is when you just, <laughs> and you dig a motherfucking pocket and take everything so they you got. you grab them. You grab them and you dig his pockets. That means, dig his pockets mean, before they had um, direct deposit and all that, people, that people had to go cash their checks. So um, certain days in Midtown, like in Brooklyn, that was a big thing. Motherfuckers from all over Brooklyn, Fort Greene, East New York, all the different projects. There were a lot of teams that was about digging pockets. Going to Manhattan. Going to Manhattan. You so, could hit so. certain areas, certain district, like the Diamond District, 47th Street. Like anywhere they had these big major corporations, these people make a lot of money, and when they cash their checks, you can see the print on their pocket that showed the money. You know what I mean? Like, you can see a print with the knot of money, and it showed that they had money. And all you got to do is creep up behind them and dig in their pockets and pull it out. So definitely was true about the whole uh, 
that that people that that you guys from Brooklyn were known that that was the the, the yeah we think here. Brooklyn like if um. If you think of early hip hop yeah, and all Manhattan the music, keeps on making it, Brooklyn keeps Manhattan on keeps on making it, Brooklyn keeps on taking it, Bronx keeps creating it, Queens keeps, keeps on faking, faking it, and there was other ones that said, um, Manhattan making, Brooklyn taking, Queens is the whack, Staten Island soft and smiling, and the Bronx bugging out on crack. Like, a lot of people oh, wow. in the most ghetto neighborhoods had, you know, different visions of how they saw these other neighborhoods, So tell man. me about that. What what was your, not not you now as an adult grown man knowing mm -hmm. the reality of everybody the same, but at that time, you know, what was your, or what was the perception of we in Brooklyn like this and them over here is like that? To yeah, break we, down all the pearls. Nah, we felt like, as far as Brooklyn, Bronx, man, Certain certain boroughs like Staten Island and and Queens and stuff we felt didn't have to weren't suffering the, the harsh realities we were. Not not to discredit them now or anything, but it's it's actually a good thing. They all had better opportunities because most of those neighborhoods were built off homes and and people who had futures and businesses and and right. more established well, like households. The, 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 um you know, Hispanic and African American in Queens were probably people that used to live in Brooklyn or the Bronx and had middle kid moved to be somewhere nicer. That was like a step but, up. But I we won't I won't even say it like that because, you know, at the times a lot of these records were being made, these areas are like a lot of people would claim certain things from these areas, but it just wasn't a reality yet. You know what I mean? Like, you look at hip hop now, right? As far as all the negativity that has been broadcasted. All that negativity as far as street culture, gang culture, drug culture. All of that shit has been broadcasted through hip hop, right? And I feel that it developed almost all these other states, cities, everything. Because there was nothing being broadcasted from none of these places before hip hop. They were they really weren't looking at hip hop in that way. Like hip hop was the first thing that introduced me to Mexican culture in California. That's Essays true. and like, you know You never even thought of like I never I remember being a kid, I just you just did, had no idea what I don't know what's going on in LA, bad but or see, good. Right. The fact that New York was the most broadcasted or the most that was That's seen what was yeah, right. In the entertainment, we really molded the majority of all this gangster shit out here today. Yeah. yeah. Just cause we were the most broadcasted. Yeah, sure. Our style and our culture, especially from a fashion standpoint. For like sure. from a fashion standpoint. Nobody was doing it ghetto wise. Whenever people were well, going to what parties, got cool anywhere in the country. What, what's oh the rapper just came from New York. They in the video with X on. So now mm -hmm. that's let me go get that. So look in every state you could think of. Think of the seventies and early eighties when people were going out to party and have a good time. How did they dress? They wore their best suit. They 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 hardest hard bottom shoes, and even in like L A and shit. They was wearing a lot of spandex, from well, that what I remember. Like, the, like the, the Motown thing, even though Detroit was, you know, a, a poverty stricken, it was the ghetto, but the Motown sound was always be dressed up. So yeah, in the 70s, that was, even in even in the ghetto, to, you could be in a poor neighborhood, people would be, they might be doing some dumb shit, but mm -hmm. they would have some dress codes. They would have to dress up, uh, uh, to you know, to be... That was just right. Right. Nah, but... From a New York perspective, we made it all right to be ghetto everywhere. We made slang acceptable around the world because we broadcasted it. Yo, we the reason they have a fucking Ebonics dictionary and slang dictionary. Like, you know, most of our culture here, me, I'm from New York. I'm a straight up New York nigga, born and raised and all that. To me, in my heart, hip hop is the biggest religion in the world, right? Hip hop is the only thing that has bridged the gaps of the world equal to currency. Nothing has done it like hip hop except for currency. Not Christianity, not Judaism, not the Catholics. None of that shit has bridged the people. Hip hop is the only thing that accepts every nationality, every religion, 
every gender, everything of every musical form. It doesn't discriminate on nothing. The only other thing that has done that that great is currency. You understand what I'm saying? And all over this fucking world. So to me, New York is the mecca. For those who don't know, this is the motherland. Because... Everybody wants to be hip-hop, whether they following the New York styles of, of now or not, you still are what you are because of what... Even if you don't know. Yep, because of and what New that, York sure. created. Yeah. We made it possible for motherfuckers to be ghetto and motherfucking show your balls and say, look, look at me, I got all these fucking tattoos, gold teeth, all these baby mothers, I've been convicted so many times in society, I'll be considered a motherfucking, a fuck up, a, a nobody, I'll never get nowhere, but in hip hop, my resume will get me to the top, being convicted, all this dumb ignorant shit, in hip hop, is worth a million dollars, right? <laughs> and that's, that's stupid, but it's the truth, right? Yeah. Real talk. Where else can I go and, gl and, and glorify my jail record and, 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 and my tattoos right, like and my so life I mean, of, of, of poverty? You, yeah, you went to like this is the greatest there. resume you could ever fucking have. Hip hop gave us all that opportunity, man, and it started right here in New York. A lot of motherfuckers would have never knew what it was to have swag until you saw it on TV. So, so, so do you remember, tell me what you remember about... When you noticed, um, you know, hip hop stuff kind of sweeping the streets and being a thing. That was my early, early, early. For the age. first time I heard hip hop, which was what year? It was from the beginning. Like from 80? the first, the King Tim the Third from the Sugar Hill Gang. It absorbed me totally. When I started doing graffiti and all that, it absorbed me totally. It absorbed my whole thinking. My everyday priority revolved around. All the hip hop thoughts I had from the attire, from the culture, the graffiti. Like, even though I didn't do the music or anything, I listened to the music as a fiend. Like, it was my addiction. You feel me? Like, even though I didn't start rapping till late in the game, I already studied everybody in the book from the beginning. You know what I mean? So, so it's like I studied Mozart. Um, Nostradamus, imagine if you were one of the greatest philosophers in any big motherfucking institution and you study all of these people because that's where hip-hop is at right now, you know what I mean, as far as that culture. I've studied everything within this to be what I need to be for the future.